So for those who watch my channel, you know I like using the SST framework slash library for deploying out my Next.js applications. And I want to walk you through how do I set up custom domains? Um, it's not as straightforward as you think it is, especially if you're a beginner, this might be a little bit overwhelming. But how did I get this set up with HTTPS where you can type in a name? And also if I do like www, it'll go straight to my application as well. Um, that's what we're going to talk about. So first of all, in order to set up a domain, you have to go and buy a domain. Every year you have to pay 10 bucks, 12 months, depending on your place that you bought it from. I like using Namecheap. Uh, I was using Google domains before they got bought out by Squarespace or whatever. So for now on, I'm probably going to transfer all of, it, all of my domains to um, Namecheap because I do like them. So let's go to manage of my YT chapters generator.com site. And I want to walk you through how I got this set up. So step one is when you try to set up SST, before you actually run your deployment, you have to set up a Route 53 zone. So what is a Route 53 zone? And I'll kind of come back later and show you these name service records that we're gonna to have to set up to get this connected to Amazon's Route 53. So on AWS, there's something called Route 53, which allows you to create something called a zone. You can create a public zone or a private zone. In this case, I have a public zone with the name ytchaptersgenerator.com. And the process is pretty straightforward. I mean, I, I guess I could kind of show you how to do that. You create a zone here, you type in your domain as is, you click public and you click create, and that's it. You got the zone, it's created. So once you've created the zone, I do think they charge you like 50 cents to set up a zone. It might be 50 cents a month or something, but anyway, it's super cheap. So once you have that zone set up, by default, you will see these two records. Okay. I do think there's some other records that they ended up adding for me or SST added for me, but these are the two records that you'll see when you set up your zone for the first time. And you'll notice that there's something called NS. What does NS stand for? It stands for name server, right? So you have all these NS records, which you basically copy all four of these and you go to your domain in Namecheap. And you make sure you go to custom DNS and you paste in those name server URLs, okay? So this is basically telling the internet that when you connect to this URL, when you type in this domain, these will be um, managed basically by the name servers that AWS owns, okay? If you don't do this, you can actually have Namecheap manage your domain if you want to, but I'm kind of like forwarding the control of this domain to AWS. And what this means, if you want to create subdomains, you'd actually do it inside of Route 53 inside your zone, you create your, your subdomains here. And it's basically a way to consolidate all your stuff related to domains inside a single place. Um, if you don't want to do like a Route 53 approach, you can actually just set up a, a CNAME record and point uh, a domain or a subdomain to your CloudFront distribution. I'm not going to show that in this video. I'm going to show you that the way that I do it on my applications. All right, but now that we have this set up here, you can actually just go ahead and do your SST deployment with this custom domain. You put in the name of your domain here and you also put in an alias. The alias is going to basically redirect any users that hits this URL directly to this URL. And behind the scenes, we automatically get a certificate that's created. I think if I go to ACM there, you'll see that I have a certificate for my YT chapters. Um, all right, right here we got a wild card YT chapters right here. We also have, you know, a top level domain YT chapters. So I think this is all created via SST automatically um, with the constructs that they provide us. But yeah, basically after doing that, I mean like within a couple of minutes, you'll have access to your deployed Next.js application that's running on your own AWS account using your own Route 53 zone. And that's kind of how you get this all set up. Super straightforward. I mean, they explain this in the SST docs. The thing they don't explain about is this part, which is different depending on where you're buying your domain from. Okay, but the, the idea is the same. You just have to go find this place somewhere where you bought your domain and you just update it. So if you guys um, deploy your application using SST, let me know. Leave a comment. I'm curious to know if you guys like using SST as well. I've, I've been using it for the past various side projects I've been deploying um, and it just works pretty good. Like always, I have a Discord that's in the description link. You're welcome to come in, ask questions. If you're stuck, maybe we'll help you out. Maybe people will ignore you. That's just the way the internet works. Have a good day and happy coding.